let's let's fix this right now, Christian. Exactly. Cameras. Cameras. <laughs> this is what I say to every single photographer and every single videographer, every single wedding. I say, hello, I'm Michael Kane. I'm the DJ. I'm gonna tell you about every single event before I execute it and make sure you're ready. I'm like, in return, the only thing I ask is, like, if you have to steal the bride and groom, you're going to tell me first. Yes. Please do not just steal them away from everybody. They're like, oh yeah, no problem. If we could have that preface, <laughs> that verbal contract at the beginning of each event, I think we'd be moving in the right direction. That sounds beautiful, sir. Great. That sounds beautiful. Welcome to another Christian Gala Films podcast. And today I am uh, talking with Michael Kane, a uh, very good DJ friend of mine. Hello, Christian. Hello. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Hello, Michael. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. Welcome to my basement. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting us. Sure. I find it hilarious and also awesome that you have your own personal DJ setup in your basement that you don't take to gigs. Oh, sure. Like, I just don't have spare cameras as background <laughs> in my in my apartment. Yeah. Um, well, it's 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 it should be uh, fun for two to keep it interesting. I don't know what's hilarious about turntables, but you know. Well, no, no, nothing awesome about turntables. Sure. Themselves. There's uh, there's two sides to my craft. Yeah. Uh, the the work side, and then there's the pleasure side. So this is the the pleasure system. That sounds perverted. <laughs> I was not gonna. Let's say move anything. on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, tell me a little bit about how you got started DJing. Sure. Um, it started as something I was always curious about, and then um, I was working full time, and I wanted to finish my degree in college, and I needed a way to do that. So I'm like, I'm going to learn how to DJ, and I did a guest spot for a friend, not knowing how to DJ, and winged it at a club. It went okay, tried it again, and then I spent a bunch of money on equipment, taught myself in a basement, like where all DJs start, and started getting jobs at local bars, and then I pretty much didn't need the restaurant job anymore. I was working full-time as a nightclub DJ, enrolled in school right away, got my degree. A little after I got my degree, I started doing, I moved to Pennsylvania from the North Jersey, and I started getting weddings. Nice. And no more clubs than weddings. Okay, so now you're full weddings. Yeah. Okay. Like 95%, I'd say at least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that definitely resonates with the video production world uh, that I am in. 95% is weddings. So going from club mm -hmm. to basically exclusively weddings, how do you take your club vibe into weddings mm -hmm. where weddings although there's a good party going at the reception, it's not just straight boom, boom, boom. Correct. So there is a strong stigma with what you just said. Um, some people want the club thing, some people don't, and they're scared of some, saying you have a club background means that you, that's all you are, and that defines you. What I have to break down to my clients when usually we have our first consultation is, I bring the, um, the element of energy of a nightclub to their reception, but I don't bring the music. So. Okay. The, ne the noise you just made that would be defined as the, the stigma, stereotypical, stereotypical yeah. club music. Doop, doop, doop. And I apologize I don't, for making yeah, that noise. I don't necessarily, <laughs> I don't walk into a wedding playing a contemporary, hard, explicit rap and trap and um, EDM. Um, I customize every single wedding to the client's playlist. They tell me what they want to hear. They tell me the exact songs, uh, when they want them to be played. I give them my opinion on that music. And it comes the day of um, the element of nightclub I bring to it is I know how to read a crowd very well. I did it at nightclubs for almost a decade. Um, I have a good, vast knowledge of music from my era before and contemporary um, and how songs are structured. And what that means is I know how to blend songs properly so they're seamless. Um, so that's called beat mixing. Um, and that helps me a lot with getting a lot of energy on a dance floor rather than being one of those hype men on the mic uh, that's like over the top, yelling at people and enunciating and threatening people to dance. I don't uh, do that. Um, yeah. I, I talk through the music. So the, I, I've got energy going. I, I blend in the next song at the right uh, time and it's seamless and it keeps that energy going. And that's how, that's how we do it. That's my nightclub finesse. 
I respect that a lot because I've seen both ends of the spectrum of the hype man who's just like, come on everybody, get up on the dance floor, let's go, to just giving a really good mix where it's like, you don't want to sit down. Like you right. want to just keep dancing or get up right away after dinner or whatever the case is. And it's just, it, it's painfully awkward sometimes when I see the hype man, mm -hmm. like essentially yelling at people yeah. and they don't. Like the music's not there, yeah. they don't feel comfortable, yeah. and it's like, dude. Uh. Um, it, when I feel like the, the hype man or, or, or even the, the guy who just doesn't mix music and just kind of iPod shuffles it, uh, like you're allowing for one of two things to happen. Either there's just like a weird crossfade of two very different songs and tempos and energy, uh, or there's just like a beat of silence before the next song comes in. Either one, it creates a strong uh, break of momentum uh, it breaks the connection you have with your audience. Um, whereas if I'm, and, and, and another thing I don't like to do is I don't like to be predictable with the music I play. So a lot of wedding DJs do a chronological order of their mix. It's very predictable. It starts off with like, da -da 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 -da. maybe a chicken dance, and then you're gonna do some disco, then you'll probably do, and Motown, and then you'll do your 80s, and eventually you'll do like a half hour, 45 minute block of all top 40 music. And what you do is you're only catering to certain sections of the audience. And you always have a small dance floor, if any at all. And by the, the second end of it, you've lost everyone because they're like, we're not going to hear any music we like. We're leaving. We ate the cake. Goodbye. Yeah. Not good. So I like to change up every single song while keeping it flowing. That way you keep all age groups involved. That's how you get literally a full dance floor. And everyone's curious what's happening the next song. They never know, is it going to be a 90s hip hop song? Is it going to be a Motown song? Is it going to be... Uh, an EDM song they don't know and it keeps them engaged and interested so that's what I use all all music all sound um, it keeps and it challenges me too because I don't want to just sit back there and mindlessly hit play that's not a job right <laughs> it's not a fun job yes yeah, so and that would make time go slow and that would be boring and I don't want to do that it's interesting that you said um, like the people who after cake they bounce because the music's not good that is like I mean at least from what I've seen, the hurdle, the biggest hurdle that DJs have to get through, because once cake's announced and the bride and groom cut cake, and then I don't know if they have like a, a Viennese hour, um, desserts, mm -hmm. dance floor, like people disperse. And like typically, I, I'd say like 50% of the time, it's dead after that. Mm. Like done. That sounds terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I don't see that very often, thankfully, agree, but I've right? heard. Um, yeah, and if I don't get enough like dancing footage before yeah. cake cutting, I'm like, oh crap. Like, That's a lot of uh, special effects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just digitally, digitally of, throw the people in there. <laughs> a lot of gifs. <laughs> we'll do another dancing Jesus over there and yes. uh, Snoop Dogg with the steering wheel on the left and then, okay, send it off. Perfect. Um, yeah, that's, I, I always see that. So um, that's good to hear that like you don't encounter that uh, very often. Like, I think that's a really good sign um, of a good DJ. Thank you. There, uh, there's kind of like an unspoken order to it. Like if you, you can get a resistant crowd, sometimes they just, it's too early, they just ate, uh, they're doing something else. Um, and you, you need to, if something's not working, you just move on to the next level. Like, okay, this uh, genre wasn't working. Let me try this genre, let me try this energy. And you keep, you keep working it. And sometimes it's just not a good time and that's not your fault. Um, most DJs would agree the, the end all to get everyone back out there is you know, they need a break, slow song. Sure. It's time for a break, give them a slow song. Most of the time it fills the dance floor, then you start over again. Like, all right, here's my next chance, get them going. If they don't come out for a slow song, um, that means no one's in love and you're at a bad wedding. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, if people don't want to dance as a slow song at a wedding, I don't know what to tell you. They're just not listening. Yeah, yeah. that's it's tough. But usually that's only early on in the night. Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, there's been a few times where I haven't uh, done this intentionally, um, or I, well, I do it intentionally for like a video moment or a, a photo. Um, but I'll like talk with the DJ and say like, hey, I want to do a group shot, mm -hmm. um, like three, two, one, bride and groom kiss, everyone cheer or something, mm -hmm. uh, and that like so the DJ announces, everyone gets on the dance floor to be in the photo or do the video. Mm -hmm. We do it instantly, boop you'd play something and then everyone's there on the dance floor. Sure. That's a great moment. But what I've seen is like half the people just 
go back to the seats. And it's like, no. Yeah. Get back on the floor. I had a wedding on Saturday where I anticipated that because every time I really? I got the the older generation to come up, as soon as I played any up tempo music, they would just motion out. Right. So I got everyone up for a, um, a classic slow song. And as soon as the song was about to end, I made an announcement. I'm like, now here's what we're going to do. We're all going to stay on the dance floor and have a good time and dance to this song, right? And I just worked in, I don't know, I think it was like, it might have even been a country song. Um, okay. That's what the client wanted. And it worked. Okay. I, I engaged a little bit. I'm like, you're going to do this. I'm like, just a reminder. It's, yes. there's a bride and groom that want to party and I you're I was gonna say, don't like the bride and groom yeah. down. And uh, yeah, it worked. So you gotta yeah, take chances. And so, sometimes I'll get a little uh, snarky or uh, sarcastic on the microphone, but it, it, it works. Sure, and at the end of the day, if they don't dance, even if you did your job perfectly, it's still kind of a poor reflection on you. Yeah. In I, some ways, you know, yeah. which stinks because it's like you did your job perfectly and you did the best mix possible. And, yeah. But if people just aren't into it, it's like. It, th thankfully, it's really rare that that happens. And, I and um, usually it's, it's more of like I got only a few people dancing, um, not full dance floor. And, and sometimes like people just leave. Um, there are certain weddings that are designed that way, literally. Um, Leave as in uh, they, they, they they leave the wedding so there's no one to make dance uh, like they a high volume of the people had no intention of dancing that night they came there to I see, see the bride and groom they came there to eat and they had intentions to be at it at a certain time some of them even bring to go containers to take food and they, they go home and wow. like, nothing, and like I'm talking about like the vast majority and, and and that's okay you still try sure sure and. Um, even if you had 300 guests and you only had like 20 of the younger bridal party dancing, like that's probably what it was meant to be. You didn't really do anything wrong. You tried. And regardless, when they are there, it's not just awkward silence. You're playing music in the background. You're adding to the experience regardless. So yeah, I always, even if there's like a, a extravagant dessert table or anything, I always pretend that like I, it's my job to be the main focus, not me particularly, but the music I'm putting out there and to, to provide, uh, yeah. A high energy, fun environment on the dance floor. That's my uh, obligation. So. Sure, you represent essentially the bride and groom. Yeah. So even like if I have um, uh, uh, people are leaving, leaving, leaving. I've had a handful of weddings where like the wedding might have ended even a little early. It just happens, mm -hmm. especially like Sunday nights, and you have predominantly like ninety percent older family members. Like there's nothing you can do. Right. I keep trying till the end, and and the bride and groom usually aren't upset about that. They're like, oh, oh no. He played, he played what we wanted, and he did a good job, and. and we had fun for pockets, and, and there were many other things to enjoy that day other than me playing dance right. music. So. Right. And that's only a portion of my job, too. I mean, as a DJ, I'm really a, a coordinator for the day. Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. Now, are you a, a DJ and MC, like all in one? Like you DJ, will announce? DJ, MC, okay. and I, I would consider myself an unofficial planner, coordinator. Sure. Um, I've, I've worked at venues where there's someone who's working there or a team of planners who are micromanaging like crazy and you just kind of like <laughs> you're more taking orders right. um, and the team. And then sometimes I've walked in places and then there's just nobody running anything and you need to take charge. You need to take charge. Like, okay, this is the timeline. This is, this is what's happening. This, this and there. And like, you're going over here and like you make everything happen start to finish. And it takes all kinds. Yeah. You never know what you're going to get when you walk, walk into the wedding. So you're right. prepared for anything. And you don't put that in your job description. Like it's, it's, it's not something that you can, I don't know, sell is the right word to bride and groom. But I think, like, yeah. Well, what's different about my company than some others is a lot of other companies, they kind of, you just call, they're like, we want a wedding DJ. We want to pay this. They're like, okay. And they just kind of send a dude out the day of your wedding and you just hope for the best that there mm. is a connection. Yep. Um, me, you know, you meet me first, uh, or at least speak to me first, make sure you're comfortable with me. You know, my background, um, and you plan with me leading up to the wedding. Like we, we have forms for like, you know, who's being introduced? How do you pronounce these names? What's the timeline going to be? Um, and let's, especially the, the music for the entire day from like the start of the ceremony to the last song of the night, we do everything. So you've uh, fostered a relationship with your client and they know like, you know, you're very intricate in with the planning. So come the day of, you know, you're not a stranger. You're not going to be in the background. You're going to be taking lead when need be. So I think they, they understand that mm -hmm. and they, they feel more comfortable and confident than if you just hired anybody like a random 
company. And that is why uh, I, I like talking to you because I just, I do so much on the front end, mm -hmm. uh, the, like before the actual wedding day. Like I, I feel like I sometimes over communicate with okay. brides and grooms. Like I'm always, so there's the initial consultation. Mm -hmm. um, I almost always try to do like, you know, grab coffee, grab drink, something, something in person. Um, that way I can meet them, get a gauge for what they're interested in. Um, if I can't, then it always is a FaceTime. Mm -hmm. Very rarely will it just be a straight phone call. Like I need to have uh, like a personal interaction. Great, they book me. Um, then it's you know questionnaire, form, this, that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then right before the wedding, hey, let's touch up again. Go wanna grab drinks? Like, like, let's create this relationship so that on the wedding day, I know exactly what's happening. We're besties <laughs> at this point. Sure. And it just makes the whole wedding day like flow so much better than just being that random guy that the company sends in. Cause I've been, yeah. I've been that guy. Okay. I've been, you know, the guy that uh, another company has sent in as like a subcontracting thing. Right. And it's fine, but I don't know the bride's groom or the bride's name until I look at the sheet that they gave me two days before the wedding. Yeah. Not exactly. Uh, well, they're warm. not comfortable in front of the camera. No, no. And it the, translates. That... It translates. Unless you have like a really open, like bubbly person, which I mean, happens. Sometimes, but sometimes Those open bar. You never know. <laughs> That's true. Definitely at the end of the night. Oh my gosh, we love you guys. <laughs> yes, I bet you do. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's a good thing that we do to um, make them feel comfortable on the day of, and make them feel like they're they hired the right people and they're in good hands, rather than you know they're they're putting a large wager on a bunch of strangers showing up and doing a good job. Mm -hmm. It's like hiring a bunch of mercenaries. <laughs> We take the shots. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess transitioning a little bit uh, from your job description as uh, a DJ, MC, planner, um, all the hats you wear, and uh, to shift the topic to working with other wedding vendors, mm -hmm. um, and I'll start with wedding videographers, uh, obviously. How is your experience with working uh, with videographers that you've met for the first time on the day of a wedding? I don't work with a lot of wedding videographers. Um, oh, that hurts. I'm sorry. It doesn't okay. mean there's nothing wrong with wedding. wedding it's just a consensus. As, as a wedding DJ, um, I don't see them very often. I see photographers a lot more. Um, I do see videographers sometimes. Uh, so I don't see a lot of repeats. Okay. Um, sometimes, um, but usually the drill is standard. Uh, the first time I interact with them is they need a feed from me, which means mm -hmm. they need to plug in some kind of recording device to my device that's putting out the sound, be that for the ceremony or for the reception, and they want to capture especially the, the wedding ceremony officiants. The vows, talking, the vows, the speeches, yeah. the, the toast. Uh, so they want a clean feed. And um, there's a spectrum of how that happens. Um, I'll go with the best case scenario. Okay. Uh, a, a videographer comes up to me early. They introduce themselves. They ask me who I am. We talk a little bit. Hey, by the way, would you mind if I plugged into your system? Uh, what kind of, or even better, I've, I've had some videographers email me a week before and introduce themselves and say, hey, I'd like to plug into your system. What kind of wires do I need? Can you do this? You like Those, that? Sure I do. I've emailed so many DJs <laughs> and none of them get back to me. Well, it, it, it takes like, all kinds. No one gets back to me. <laughs> I very much appreciate that. It's a, it's a great courtesy. It's very professional. And because um, let's talk about what happens most commonly. A videographer just comes up to me. They do not introduce themselves. They are just like, where can I plug in? I'm like, I don't know who you are. <laughs> I know you have a video camera. You're probably working today. I'm like, you should be a little bit more courteous and professional. Like, mm -hmm. your name is what? Right. I am. I am this person. Hello. So, I, it, some people might call it snarky, but like, when if you come up to me and you say, no. where do I plug in? I'm like, hi, my name is Michael Kane. Right. I'm the DJ today. Hi, Michael. And remind them <laughs> about manners and professionalism. And I do that with anyone at a wedding. But that's what it's about. It, I don't like feeling I'm in a wedding factory and some people uh, 
enable it and, and, and they push that and, and it, it shouldn't be that way. We should yeah. be able to talk to each other um, even if we're not in the spotlight or in front of our clients. Um, so beyond that, uh, usually what happens is they're, this is surprising, they're not prepared with the equipment they need. Really? Often, uh, nine out of 10, I have to provide them with the, the cables necessary to plug in their audio thing. They're like, where can I plug in? I'm like, well, I can plug you into my, oh, okay. And I'm like, well, um, you need RCA, which is the red and white cables. And they're like, I don't have that. I'm like, okay, what do you have? And they're like, I only have XLR. I'm like, okay, great. I'm like, what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to loan you the adapter for the day. I'm like, you're going to go to Radio Shack tomorrow and you're going to be prepared for your next wedding. Is that a deal? And, like, yeah. and they probably don't do that. It's just a little joke, but like, I do have to provide them with the equipment. And if I didn't have it, or if I didn't want to help them, they would be out of luck. They mm. would not be able to get the feed. It would affect their final product for the client, which they're paying a lot of money for and you mm. can't redo. And it really surprises me because they have a lot of other really high-end equipment. So, um, and I'd say the worst beyond that is people that just like, they, they plug into my systems and wrap like neon wires around all my stuff. Cause I, I have an aesthetic. I, I'm, I put sure. effort to my look for the day Sure. and they're just kind of without asking, you know, manipulate my equipment. And I'm like, ah, I really don't like this. Yeah. <laughs> But what's the point? I'm not gonna punch anyone anyway, but I don't like this. <laughs> what's the point where you say like, "Hey, dude, no," because like you know that they're doing it for the bride and groom, and you're working for the bride yeah. and groom. But it's I understand. Yeah, it's it's boundaries, and yeah. that's stepping too far. Uh, I'd say the only time I s have to say something is uh, sometimes they do something. They plug into my speaker in such a way that it's affecting the performance of the speaker. Sure. That is a no-no. I'm like, I can't let you do this. Whatever you're plugging into here is draining power. It's creating power. Uh, it's creating a problem for me. I'm like, right. let's talk about other options. Um, I don't know why I have to be that courteous to someone who's that intrusive, but I do because we're in a very, we're wearing suits and we're in a very um, right. nice atmosphere. <laughs> yeah. Can we just work together all the time? Because the majority of the DJs yes. <clears throat> that I work with, when it comes to like introductions, half of them are very interested in like, hi, how are you? My name's this, my name's Christian, you know, nice to meet you. Oh, would you mind if I grabbed a line out? Sure, no problem, what do you, what do you need? Out? And I always say like, I have every single cable. Oh, look um, at you. <laughs> we should work together. Or, or start cloning ourselves and we can just I run like the wedding idea. industry. Okay, great. <laughs> Done. Cloning. Cloning. <laughs> It's not hard. $30 and you have all the cables. XLR, RCA, yeah. quarter inch, done. I have them all in the Ziploc bag. I've had them for years. I have a clear Ziploc bag with everything. That's it. Ziploc. Uh, <laughs> zip <laughs> I see exactly where everything is. Great. Um, but when it comes to the introduction, half the DJs are like very into like, yeah, let's get to know each other, you know, joke around a little bit, build a rapport. Other ones, have z they know they're obligated to give me a line out. Mm -hmm. They have zero interest in talking to me. Mm -hmm. So I'll do like, hi, I'm Christian, how's it go? Hi. What do you need? <sighs> okay. Like, and, and sadly, that's kind of how I've been conditioned in like the like uh, running gun, like I need a line out. <clears throat> I always push myself to be courteous, even mm -hmm. if they're not gonna be courteous with me. Um, but sometimes it's just discouraging. And I don't ever want to be like short, but at the same time, I don't want this DJ to like get mad at me because I'm being polite and then he not gives me what I want, if that makes sense. Which sounds stupid, yeah. but. Uh, I don't, uh, so I think it's not a, a DJ thing. It, it, it's just people. It's correct. just personalized. Cause correct. I've had the same with um, videographers and photographers and everybody. There's people who are just miserable or introverts um, and they, don't, they, they can't or don't want to turn it on when they're at work, um, which is unfortunate. Um, so you just gotta feel that out. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel that out like right away, like if someone's going to be uh, sociable or fun. Here, here's my thing though, like I break it down into people who are like real. We're talking about uh, the vendors, the videographers, the photographers. Like, are you going to be real with me and talk to me like a real person? Like we'll talk about what's going on and have fun or are you going to be fake? And if you're fake and over the top, like I really don't have any interest in talking to you. Like you're kind of getting on my nerves a little bit. Oh, oh 100%. Yeah. Like if you come up very fake and this is the, you know, like, like, oh, the, the 
bride and groom are the best ever, and this is so exciting. Like, I, like really, really, really over the top, like when it. no one's looking like nonstop. Like, it's a little too much, and like, to be fair, everyone, when they're at their job, whatever that job is, they like to have fun, they like to joke, mm. and they like to just like, you know, whatever it might be. It's like, you know, it helps you get through the day. It, it, it builds rapport with who you're working with, mm -hmm. and foster relationships. So like, if you're, if you're funny, or like you wanna like just talk about experiences, or whatever it might be, like, I'll get along with you fine. If you're just short and quiet and, and I get pick up on that right away, like I'm not gonna push too hard. I'm going I'm not gonna ignore you or give you an attitude, but I'm going to only give you minimal interaction, like, you know, hey, it's time for this. Are you ready for this? Sure. Is there blah blah blah? And just leave you be if that's how you are. So it's unfortunate, but you you gotta you gotta read that. Right, right <laughs> yeah. So now do you get like the photographer and the videographer and uh, well, it's basically it by the reception time. Like, oh, we're going to do this next. Like, parent dances or cake cutting. Every or... single time. You do that. Yeah. Like, Thank you, sir. Every single time. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? Like, that's a great. Listen, question. if I if I wake up like and I really don't want to go to work and I don't feel good or like whatever, I don't want to be there. I'm not gonna show that, mm. um, or, or or showcase that on the microphone or to my client. Um, and when I have to do my job, it's time to do my job. Um, so it would be not, it'd be disadvantageous to me to not uh, establish some kind of team effort with whoever wants to be on board for the day, including you, the photographer, uh, the maitre d', whoever right. is going to be there doing stuff. So like every time I'm about to execute something on our timeline, like the cake cutting, okay, we established we want to do the cake around this time, so I will like go up to you, I'm like, hey, I'm going to play a slow song next. That's going to bring down the energy. As soon as that's done, we're going to shoot the cake. That gives you at least five or plus minutes to get set up to do whatever you have to do. Same thing with photographers, same thing with major day. It makes things go well. It makes people like me. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Even if they don't like me as a, a, a person, like if I'm a little too snarky and behind the scenes, but they have, uh, respect the professionalism. Who, who would not like you as a person? That's my question. No. Fake people. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Because I don't, I, I can't, I, I don't have the energy to, to put on, to match their front. So I, mm -hmm. I, I don't engage in that. So I just, I'm just polite and a little reserved. Um, so yeah, but um, I always just try to establish team effort. And unfortunately, some people are not on board. Um, and an example of that is just like when you guys, uh, not you guys, but like the other vendors just disappear. Mm -hmm. I've had many experiences where like videographers and photographers like are like hidden in like the bridal suite or like they've stolen the bride and groom and, and done like a, a photo shoot for like a 35 minutes like far like and no phones and like we can't find and we can't operate like that's mm -hmm. a big big problem and it puts everybody on hold um, and it eats up a lot of time and it's kind of uh, well it's unprofessional it's uh, selfish yeah because they're, they're thinking about like you know whether they're relaxing somewhere and they, and, they, and they, they need people to come find them to do something or they're just stealing the client to get their vision like this is a big day and there's a lot of money being spent we all need to be on the same page and communication is cannot, a two-way street you cannot hide right. um so yeah i always let people know when it's time to do stuff but like when i can't find you oof i once had a dj and he was an older gentleman um but he voiced his uh, opinions very early on during the introduction, uh, or like, like when we introduced. Oh, oh, okay. and, and, no. <laughs> no. I have a few things to say to the biographer. <laughs> so everyone can hear it. <laughs> no, not during the actual wedding introduction. Uh, when, when like, you know, cocktail hour when we met. That's too bad. Um, so, <laughs> that would be great. That'd be I, great. Uh, <laughs> That'd be his last shift. <laughs> okay, sir. Um, he said, he, he talked to the photographer and I at the same time and he said, guys, I am not gonna get you for anything. Any events that happen, <laughs> I am not responsible. This is, yeah, this is real stuff. I am not responsible. I trust your professional intuition to uh, be aware um, when things are gonna happen. Yeah. Also, I don't have a schedule. I just go with things. I read the room and I go with uh, the flow. So I can do things at any point and I'm not going to come get you. And I was like, wow, dude, that is a double whammy. Like yeah. you were being super not helpful whatsoever. So I had to not, I didn't leave the room. 
I didn't use the bathroom, and I'm sitting <laughs> like, now granted, you know, it was, it, I was fine. Uh, it didn't need to, like, I did not leave the room. George, diapers, we got an old school <laughs> DJ <laughs> over here. It's gonna be a rough one. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just, in a bottle, George, you take care of this. Yeah. Like, that's how, <laughs> that's how ridiculous it was. And, you know. That's ego, man. And I did, and he was, he was definitely, like, he looked like he was in his 60s. Uh, he seemed to enjoy what he was Some doing. people don't is, get out. Yeah, they I just don't. They will go. As long as they get people keep signing that dollar, they won't Dude, I will not be in weddings when I'm 60 years old. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Not, not Stay my thing. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> Let's fast forward 40 years. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's terrible. Um, I think once I, in my career, I, there are a few things that I've made one mistake about and I, like, I, it's etched in stone. Like, I'd never forget, like, okay. you know, I'd never do it again. And one time, um, I didn't intentionally not tell the, whether it was videography or photographer, mm -hmm. uh, that I was going to do, I think it was a, a, a parent dance. Um, again, they were eating somewhere far away, um, fine. Uh, but I, I was told by um, the bride, I think, she goes, I need to dance with my dad right now. Like, I don't know why it was so urgent, but like things were kind of being put in motion before I announced it, which was okay. kind of unusual. And it just kind of went that way. And I noticed that like the guys weren't around, but I just kind of like went into it and I, I did the, the parent dance. And, um, halfway through the song I just I felt bad I'm like they're still not out here I'm like I don't know where they are and I kind of abandoned my DJ booth and I ran and I found them and I saw them eating hors d'oeuvres somewhere I'm like we're doing the parent dances right now I'm sorry I need you to get out there right now and they hustled and they tried to get it and they were really mad with me understandably but I'm like mm. I've been in that scenario so two things happened after that one is like I actually I felt so bad that I created a, I did a mulligan for them like I asked the bride I'm like would you just dance with your dad again um, just randomly throughout the night just for a little bit so they can get some footage? We, sure. we made it work. And of course, never again would I, even if I had to go find the vendor, I never executed something without finding them. Mm -hmm. um, because it's not about the vendor being unprofessional. It's like, it's the bride and groom. They have expectations from all their vendors and I'm right. not going to rob them of that footage right. or photos. Yeah. And <clears throat> the scenario I was in, um, very similar. Uh, one key difference it, from your story, it sounded like you know the bride came to you and was like, "This needs to happen." Yeah, it happened to me. Um, the venue seated us for dinner, like on a different floor. Couldn't hear a thing. Uh -huh. We knew the schedule. Uh -huh. There was a wedding planner there. We were very in sync with her, mm -hmm. um, and it was it was nine fifteen, and this was I don't know why everything was so spread out. I, I don't like spread out schedules of like formalities, but parent dancers were at 10 o'clock. It was 9.15, we're eating, and uh, like a bridal attendant or someone who worked at the venue uh, was like, hey, they're doing parent dances right now. And we just all rushed up, and the bride was in tears because we missed it. Yeah. And we talked to the wedding planner, and she's like, I don't, know why they, I don't know why they announced it. And there was definitely some tension, uh, but we came together and we did another dance. Like at the end of the night, did another dance and it works. Let's, let's fix this right now, Christian. Exactly. Cameras. Cameras. <laughs> this is what I say to every single photographer, every single videographer, every single wedding. I say, hello, I'm Michael Kane. I'm the DJ, this and that. I'm like, I'm very simple to work with. Here's how it's gonna go. I'm gonna tell you about every single event before I execute it and make sure you're ready. They're like, oh, thank you. I'm like, yes. I'm like, in return, the only thing I ask is like, if you have to steal the bride and groom, you're going to tell me first. Yes. Please do not just steal them away from everybody. They're like, oh yeah, no problem. And every time it usually goes pretty well. Mm -hmm. I think that the vendors should do, uh, videographers, photographers, everybody should say the same. Like, hey, DJ, I'm like, I'm so-and-so. I'm like, anything you need, let me know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, please, just let us know if you're going to do any of the events just so we can prepare. We'd really appreciate it. And in return, if we need to borrow the bride and groom, we will let you know. If we could have that preface, <laughs> that verbal contract at the beginning of each event, I think we'd be moving in the right direction. That sounds beautiful, Great. sir. That sounds beautiful. <laughs> Ziploc bags. Z <laughs> Throwback. <laughs> Ziploc bags. Audio cables. Have them. Audio cables. Radio Shack. Keep Radio Shack alive. 
<laughs> What's the Radio Shack now? <laughs> Uh, there's a show called Stranger Things. Yes. And R.I.P. Bob. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so glad we could sneak those, those references in there. Yes, yes. I'd say the only other thing that is important to me is like, um, if you hire a DJ or a band uh, that cares about their look, you'll notice that they have a very clean setup. There's nothing exposed. There's probably a certain element of symmetry. It's very well presented. There's not bags lying around, loose cables, etc. Typically, I'm like, I'm like fine tuning my look just before everyone arrives. And then my qualm sometimes with photographers and videographers is they come in and they don't care about your look and they throw their gear all over your gear. Like they just got out of the airport and they're just, they want to get home. They don't want to unpack and it, it is a mess. And it sometimes it blocks how I can walk and mm -hmm. it creates problems and it doesn't look good. And it would be nice if they could maybe put a little more effort in that way. Um, I completely agree. Because when they do care about a look is like say the ceremony, they might not look like the look of a DJ or a speaker or anything in their frame or they have a problem with a microphone stand or something like that. Anything in frame they Same really care about. Same concept applies. <laughs> Same concept So like, applies. this is my frame, like keep this clean, you know, because right. people are gonna be looking at me and I don't need to look like a, ba a big, um, what are those called? The, the rotaries at the airport with the luggage that go around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the luggage retrieval. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, I don't want um, to give that up. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, when it comes to like laying bags down, uh, there's all throughout the reception, I need to get different mm -hmm. like lenses and, and uh, yeah. you know, different pieces of gear. Um, so like, I'm, it's something where I need access to it. So. Yeah. And some venues, like, they, like, force you, like, shove your bags in this closet. And I hate that because, mm. it, like, it takes me significantly more time and I could miss a moment sure. or something. Yeah. Um, so there's that end of the spectrum, but there's absolutely, like, a level of cleanliness and organization mm -hmm. that we can have. Yeah. Um, I mean, each, I mean, I personally have three bags. Most photographers have, like, one or two bags. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard. No, it just takes it's a few moments of consideration. Right. It's not a big deal. Although it hasn't happened like with us two at a wedding, but I apologize because uh, sure. that's, that's happened. Sure. Because uh, sometimes the heat of the moment, um, just like we got to get going, like we got like everything's yeah. moving. Um, we just came back from photo session reception, like reception starting in literally three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's good to have this communication vendor to vendor and, mm -hmm. and to be able to um, broadcast it because I, I think another thing we talked about earlier is just like say uh, a DJ has lighting effects and there's a special moment you want to capture and the lights are just making it not look good. Mm -hmm. It's not too outrageous to say to approach a DJ nicely say hey during this particular dance or this moment could we have could you do this color could you only turn on half the lights whatever it might be mm -hmm. and like find something that works if you're cool about it, like most DJs who aren't uptight will be like, I, yeah, sure. Like it's, it's if it, it, if the lights don't represent their ego, like your boy, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh like, like, you, you know, you're capturing a moment. You right. want it to look good for the client. That's why we're all there. Um, sure. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a problem, but it's about communication. So just because a DJ yeah. would not assume I, di I didn't find that out till about like two or three years ago. Like I was at a, a meeting where we're all kind of like venting about our problems with other vendors. And I'm like, I never knew that was a problem. Like, I oh, think like your lights. Yeah. And like, it's not always a problem, but sure. like in certain situations, maybe the lights are affecting your vision. And like, if you just button up about it because you're too afraid to approach me, then the final product suffers. Yeah. Lighting, everything. Sound like, too. Like there are places that straight up like ban, like do you have subs? Don't bring them. They're not allowed in here. Absolutely. Really? And there are many places that are now uh, eliminating DJs being able to bring speakers and they've installed their own bad sound system because they don't know anything about sound systems and you're forced to plug into them and it sounds like horrible. Garbage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can't, you're, you best can't do anything about best it. Best you could do that's is like rules. EQ it a little bit, but that's Some it. DJ ruined it. Uh, you know, he, he partied too hard one night with the sound. Mm -hmm. The neighbors complained. They're like, we're going to shut you down unless you're below these decibels. And they're like, all right, don't shut us down. We love wedding money. And then they mm -hmm. put in like a bunch of like, compact computer speakers around the ceiling and they're like all right plug in and i'm like 
Oh no! Uh, They're not even uh, facing the dance floor. Like who did this? <laughs> it, and I'm exaggerating wow. a little bit, but not a lot. That's terrible. Yeah, there were some places that. So and so this is another instance of like someone does not understand the equipment, and it, everyone is suffering because of it. So, uh, yeah. So communication. communication. Like hey, this sound system is awful, but you gotta say like nice. Was, you can't use it. <laughs> hey. <These> spotlights. <laughs> Gotta work on those, man. Can't say that. <laughs> yeah. Always be willing to communicate and be nice, and you might get something good out of it. <laughs> and the DJ learns something. Yeah, yeah. Like the thing that bothers you often as a DJ is like could ruin um, a look. Sure, and I mean honestly, when I first started out and like uh, encountered the um, moving head spotlights that uh, a lot of DJs have. Mm -hmm. I kind of just didn't do anything about it. I didn't say anything. I was yeah. like, oh, this is the way it is. Now, almost every single time I'll talk to them and be like, hey, would you mind just like half the intensity? Sure. No problems. Like, I, it, it does not bother me anymore yeah. uh, because it's just... They're not benefiting from having full power of the lights. No, there's zero. Yeah. Right. It's just <laughs> so much better. Uh, yeah. Cause, and they provided a light source. Like, yes, I have the capability of lighting the dance floor to keep the you know, ambiance yeah. of, of the room while still getting good light, but they're providing another light source. So like, I say thank you to that. <laughs> I'll add one more thing about lights that is a little bit of a peeve. And this does not happen often, but it does happen sometimes. Some videographers bring in like, like a light like that, but like, it's like not even LED. A studio light. It's yeah. like a old school bulb and it's like a oh, floodlight. No. Multiple. They like surround the dance floor. No. Like it's, um, like a, a, a contamination scene in like some kind of yeah, like, like apocalypse the, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was in hazmat suits, but like so they have these <laughs> really high intensity white lights on only. They don't flash and they don't change how bright they're. They're just like boom, hundred uh. watts. And I'm like, I did bring dance floor lights, but no one's going to notice them because everything is drowned out by these bright white lights on all night. I'm like, that is so stupid. I know you can see everything on your camcorder, but right. come on, man. Oh. <laughs> Like, you, we're, we're not me. able to create any kind of atmosphere at all. Right. Like it feels more like an interrogation than a reception. It's just bad. And that, so that's interesting because obviously all the weddings that I'm at, I don't see other videographers because I am the videographer. Mm -hmm. So like that, I mean, I, obviously I know that like, they're definitely like the older school, um, yeah. like, you know, big camera on the shoulder. I know that's still out there. Mm -hmm to each their own. Or a bunch of little cheap cameras and they get like six points of view yeah. for every little thing. <laughs> uh, it's like, oh, you can, you can do a lot of work, a lot of great creative shots with just like two cameras and mm -hmm. like shoot at different angles and make it in the edit. But um, you don't need six cameras. Nope. But my biggest thing, I have my key light, which is the strongest light. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, I put that up on a tall light stand, get it as high as I can, angle it down mm -hmm. so it doesn't blind anybody. I have it uh, controlled on my phone, variable cool. intensity, variable color, depending on like the room. Mm -hmm. um, I'll put that on the dance floor. And then I have a little small uh, LED panel, same thing, variable t uh, intensity, variable color. Mm -hmm. That goes on a light stand um, just as like a fill for dancing. I get sometimes it can uh, kill the mood, but that's when I just turn it down. Or I do like 10 minutes of solid dance shooting and then yeah. go off. Oh, great, yeah. Because like, they don't need to be on all night. No. It's ridiculous. They don't. They um, don't. <laughs> I, no, don't that, be, that, I don't want to be shooting that long. No, like, that, that's like, understandable. <laughs> that, that's reasonable. That's the way it should be. Uh, it's, it's just having um, all the lights on all the time. Yeah, is, that's is, terrible. Is issue. Yeah, that's just someone that just needs to be told, like, stop doing that. Right. Here's all the problems you're causing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, Communication. It's, it's, well, also, you, we mentioned that a lot of these people are uh, the older gen, and they can only stick around so much longer before they stop getting hired or realize, like, I, I shouldn't be doing this anymore. Sure. I'm making the world hurt. My, <laughs> <laughs> my buddy's wedding that I was, I was the best man in. Uh -oh. um, uh, <laughs> They, had, Courtney was actually shooting that wedding, uh -huh. um, along with uh, she was second shooting for another friend of ours, Heather. Um, but the videographer was an old school guy, mm -hmm. um, older older gentleman. Interesting. Big camera, and I my buddy like they were on a tight budget. 
they cared more about photography, so they hired a good photographer. Right. And they just wanted documentation of yes. their wedding, so they went with essentially the cheapest videographer that did like you know a reliable job. Yeah. Perfectly acceptable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Reception time came around. LED light slapped on the camera. Mm -hmm. Like. And, and at one point there was like a circle, uh, like everyone made a circle around the bride and groom. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in the circle, just like blasting people with light. <laughs> and my parents, my, my whole family was actually at this wedding because uh, you know, my childhood friend, my dad goes, <laughs> Christian, if you need a second shooter, I'm sure he'd be willing. I was like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Absolutely he's, not. Your dad's like teasing like about handing him your cards. Like, I'm gonna give him <laughs> And he said it, he said it to be funny because he knows like he's like he's like that videographer is really intrusive. I go, mm -hmm. I f mm -hmm. I find it interesting that even though your friend was on a budget, he didn't at least consult you being in the bridal party. Well, and it's one of those things where if I could have set him up uh, with like my crew coming, I would have. But it was the same day my crew was shooting another wedding, right? Okay. So like I had zero resources to okay. give him. Or even advice or like let me research yeah. what you're going to bring into this because I, I, yeah. I've, had, <laughs> I've had friends who did not consult me when well, they know very well I'm a wedding DJ and mm -hmm. like, whether or not you think I'm good or not you know I know about this industry and I sure. know people and I usually help people when they need it and they just go ahead and wing it with budget or like family friend and then like I go to their wedding and I'm just like oh boy <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I you know I have a look uh, away <laughs> Close your ears. I, yeah, I, I have a friend that's getting married um, this October and like she had lots of questions and I gave her, I helped her every bit of the way. I, I referred her to the, the best DJ she could have that fits mm -hmm. her needs and within her budget, photography, um, things brides don't think about. Just like, you know, like, oh, this happens all the time. You should plan for this. Mm -hmm. When you should send your invites out, like blah, blah, blah. I gave her a wealth of knowledge that she probably could have found online one way or another, but like I, I had it all on hand, like because I know like the best. and so she's way better off for it and is much more prepared. Mm -hmm. She's going to have a much better celebration by like using, but by just spending a few t sure. minutes talking to me, which your friend should have did with you, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had the, the the war of the worlds like <laughs> melting people as he goes around the circle. <laughs> we talked a little bit. We talked like a little that, bit. <laughs> We talked a little bit after he hired the videographer, um, which was fine. And he knew what he was getting himself into. Like he knew the quality. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Like, cause like, there's- Look at these Courtney pictures. Though. Let's <laughs> talk about this. Well, I don't know why he would do uh, <laughs> Courtney, <no. laughs> Courtney does a phenomenal job. No, her, her and uh, Heather, they, they killed it. Uh, mm -hmm. Like it was just such a moving day. We were fighting rain, um, like they just, bang things out, uh, got great shots. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll let clients, I'm like, they're like, what kind of uh, music do you like? Like, what's your style? I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like, if there is no, there shouldn't be a style. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you have a style. You, you're, you're capturing, you, you have an eye. You're capturing things, you're editing things. Sure. There's a look, there's an aesthetic. You establish that. Uh, same thing with photography. I'm a DJ. I have a set of skills, but I'm like, you pick the music. I'm not going to, I'm like, well, I'm really just a reggaeton DJ. Uh, if you have anything that's not reggae tone, you probably shouldn't hire me. Like that's not really like how it is. Um, right. You pick the music. It's my job to make the music blend and, and make it a party atmosphere. Uh, I'm. I digress. I'm getting way off track. No, what I was no, trying no. to say is about my passion. Um, yeah. I mean, I came from the a nightclub scene um, where I, I I was really into like expressing myself through the music I was discovering and like connecting with an audience on that level. Um, weddings is not the place for that, and I figured that out pretty early on. Mm -hmm. Like you, you'd work them in with like some fun, familiar music, and then like you're like, I found this deep house song, and I love it, and I think it will blend in well here. I'm like, let's see what happens. And too often, like even if they're eating out of your hand, it just weddings are not the place people want to learn music. They want familiar and they run away the moment it's unfamiliar. So it's very... I get that. Yeah, the atmosphere is very like uh, hit or miss. So like, and sometimes like you, you, even you go a little t with contemporary uh, popular music, if you're losing too many people, it's not worth it to stay there too long. You need to bring like, all right, Jackson 5, come back out. You know Jackson 5. <laughs> but at the same time, you don't want to play uh -huh cliche songs or corn or like gag songs like I don't do that unless I'm absolutely my hand is forced by the client right line dances chicken dance 
just like played out. Do people request the chicken dance anymore? Yeah. I have not heard the chicken dance in years. I gotta play it this weekend. If it's on their list. Wow. It's your wedding, it's your vision. Um, and I respect that. Yeah. But I've um, not heard that in years. Not at a wedding. Again, I, I take it as far as I advise the clients. I'm like, this is, here, here's the, what, the instructions you've given me. I'm like, let me walk you through realistically, based on my experience, how this is going to play out. Most of the time, they don't give me resistance. Sometimes I'm like, I'm like, ultimately, you, it's your wedding. You let me know what you'd like, and I'm going to carry that out. But they're like, nope, Michael, we really believe in this bad decision, and we want to carry out this bad decision. I'm, like, I'm going to do that for you. And right. And um, I'll make that massacre happen. And I'm like, <laughs> Put on I warn you. <laughs> um, but going back, uh, so like if, if they say the chicken dance, I'm like, okay, if, that, if that's your kind of crowd, then we'll, I'll, I'll work in the chicken dance at some point, uh, sure. probably earlier. But like on my own accord, I would never play the chicken dance. I would never do like all those line dances because like people, more people are scared of that stuff at weddings. They don't want a cheesy wedding. They don't want it to be tacky. Um, and I don't want to lose credibility when I have to make people dance for two to three hours. Like I need to seem with it and cool and, I, and that I connect with them and I understand what they want to hear or they're just going to make fun of me from their tables all night at the bar. That's not a good career. Um, and that's when, yeah, like if you're your boy in your mid to later 60s, uh, like that's yes. probably getting that a lot. He's not picking up on those tones or he just needs the cash that bad. Yeah. 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 So, um, <laughs> yeah, people ask for silly things, and I'll and I'll do, and I advise them, and usually they listen. Sure. And I, I just I, I, I maybe, whether it be playing a, a certain song at a certain point in the night differently than what they wanted, they still get their needs met and they're satisfied, but it, it's executed better, and and I give them a better result by just mm -hmm. shifting some things around. When it comes down to the end of the day, you want to put your own flair as much as you can because that's why they're hiring you. Because your flair, your skill, your yeah. style, technique. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I would, yes, you, uh, I'd say, like, I have a style that people hire me for. Mm -hmm. um, like, people don't tell me how to do wedding videos. Yeah. Uh, people tell you what music that they want to hear. Sure. Um, but I would still argue to say that there is some style in the work that you do. Uh, oh, yeah, it, there's, a, there's a lot of decision making going constantly. Mm -hmm. um, I, I give you this song and it works and then I'm giving you this song and I'm like, it's not working. I, I'm not going to even probably finish that song if I see the dance floor disappearing. I, again, I talk about reading the audience, just like a nightclub, like you can't let a dance floor die. It's time, it's time to blend in a, a song that you feel confident about based on that audience interest and the Brian Groom's interest and then like yep. you just, you keep going till you get them back out there and you pull out all the stops till you get to that point. And like I said earlier, like if all else fails, it's going really bad, you're probably due for a slow song. Hit them with a the slow song, regroup, start over again. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if that's style, I, some people would call that style, I consider that just like basic 101. Like you should know how your gear works, you should know how records work and you know, how to beat mix and the structure of songs and knowledge of music and all mm -hmm. this stuff. People don't, like, I don't consider it a big deal, but, like, when I hear about other wedding DJs, say, other yeah. nightmares, I'm like, there's a lot of people that just want to throw in the tux and get paid, and they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> there's, there's a good amount of people who want to be cool and be a DJ, but just don't put in the education, the work that goes into it. So, really, for me, with my business, what works best is uh, not hardcore sales pressure tactics. It's just, I have established uh, a reputation now online where if you look at my name or you find me through my company, like there's long lists of glowing reviews on the popular bride sites and that does most of the work for me. Like they're not fake. The clients wrote that themselves on their own accord and like it gives you that credibility. So then they just, or some, if they see you out of way, that's even better. Yeah, they, sure. they know you're, oh, yeah. you're not a joke. And um, yeah, then you talk to them and you can, uh, establish that uh, rapport right away and then that's it that's it yeah and uh what is your company name where can uh, we find you i work for silver sound djs nice google them and you'll find me there behind these turntables behind these turntables <laughs> I've, I've worked with silver sound before they have been around for a while they have a reputation nice 
Michael Caine. A good reputation. A good reputation. <laughs> <laughs> with everyone except Michael Caine. <laughs> yeah. I get, I get the crumbs with left over. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> When, when, when you can't afford the Craigslist DJ, they come to Michael Caine. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, th- <laughs> thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Absolutely. Uh, this is definitely a more lighthearted uh, podcast, just since uh, we joke so much. But, um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed uh, the topics that we talked about. And Same. I think if we can all... If we can summarize the entire podcast into one word, it would be communication. Yes. Yes. Communication. That's what we're uh, between uh, clients and yourself, the the vendor, and vendor to vendor. Mm -hmm. That's it. People listen, people learn. And then I'm thinking we'll shoot a star over. Yes. In post. Uh, well, thank right. you very much. That's a wrap. Thanks That's for a coming wrap. to my basement, Christian. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for inviting me to your basement, Michael. See you later, fans. See. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. All right. Uh, that's a wrap. That's a wrap.